أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Brothers, Sisters and Children in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today we come to the third juz or the third para of the Noble Quran and this consists of the remainder of Surah Al-Baqarah uh, as well as a major portion of Surah Ali Imran now the remainder portion of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, two points uh, I want to highlight, although of course uh, in this Surah there are many, many other aspects uh, that are dealt with, but two things that we as Muslims uh, perhaps need to pay special attention to. The first is that in this Surah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, commands the prohibition of riba. Riba means uh, usury. Now this is a vast subject uh, and of course uh, if you uh, consider the present day banking system uh, it is designed in such a way that it makes the rich richer and the poor poorer and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden riba in financial transactions. Riba actually means growth so it's of course it's an unnatural growth and there is a difference between business transactions which are natural where there is a risk of loss as well and riba which is forced uh, increase in uh, money when in fact money is merely an instrument of exchange money should not have intrinsic value and yet regrettably this riba system provides value to money and that's how we run into these problems and these difficulties and of course uh, you would know from your um, uh, Islamic history that the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had mentioned the prohibition of riba and emphasized it in particular during his khutbah at the time of Hajj that he performed in the ninth year of the Hijrah uh, and that was his only Hajj that he performed in his life and he specifically mentioned in addition to of course other aspects but riba the prohibition of riba uh, at the time of Hajj so that uh, as large a number of people as possible would be able to uh, hear that message and abide by it. And this surah concludes with a beautiful dua that I think we all uh, need to pay attention to and recite it as much as we can uh, because it, it is really a moving dua uh, in which we beseech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and uh, beg him not to uh, impose a burden greater than what we can bear and so uh, the surah that started off surah al-baqarah started off with um, emphasizing that there is no no doubt in this quran and that it has guidance for the muttaqin it concludes once again with a beautiful dua that we always need to turn to every time uh, that uh, we are either in difficulties or ev even if we are not and we should always be cognizant of Allah's power presence and uh, seek his blessings and his mercy. Surah Ali Imran, as the name suggests, uh, relates to the, the surah relates to the family of Imran. And of course, it starts um, off, the surah was revealed after the battle of Badr. And as I had mentioned in the beginning, uh, on the first day, that the Quran is not arranged in a chronological order. So the events of the Battle of Badr are actually dealt with in Surah Al-Anfal. And yet here we are in Surah Ali Imran, the third Surah of the Quran, where the aftermath of the Battle of Badr uh, is being discussed uh, in this Surah. And of course, it also deals with the aspects arising out of the aftermath of Uhud. So of course, we know from, your, from Islamic history that Muslims were successful in the Battle of Badr. A small group of Muslims, only about 313, that encountered a massive um, Makkah Mushrik's army of a thousand strong, heavily armed, and yet these committed Muslims of only 313 were able to defeat the Makkah Mushrik's and thereby uh, save Islam from virtual extinction. 
The battle of Uhud, of course, occurred in the third year of the Hijrah. The battle of Badr was in the second year, in the month of Ramadan, the battle of Uhud in the third year of the Hijrah, in which initially the Muslims were successful, but then unfortunately they started to run after the war booty, and thereby the Mushrikeen were able to come from behind them and were able to attack the Muslims and caused a lot of casualties, thereby uh, the Muslims uh, suffering a major uh, setback. So uh, there are lessons uh, in that for us in terms of uh, not um, disobeying the commands of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he had clearly instructed the Muslims uh, in the Battle of Uhud. And of course there was also this group of um, Munafiks, uh, 300 of them, led by Abdullah ibn Ubay who abandoned the Muslims because um, he was uh, not in favor of coming out of Medina to fight against the Mushriks. He wanted to fight inside Medina, uh, but the majority of the opinion was that they wanted to go out and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam deferred to majority opinion. And so we see that in early Islamic history in Medina, uh, there were at least 300 people that joined the chief Munafiq Abdullah ibn Ubay. And as I had mentioned on a previous occasion that uh, this category of people is a very dangerous category that uh, exists within the ranks of Muslims and they cause a lot of damage to Muslims and Islam. So as the surah proceeds, um, it talks about the story of uh, Maryam salam, who is of course the mother of Isa salam. Now the mother of Maryam salam, uh, had vowed that she would uh, consecrate her next child to the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in her own mind she thought that she would have a son and yet when a baby girl is born to her she obviously exclaims uh, as to you know oh Allah this is a girl of course Allah knows that it's a girl and this was Allah's plan that he wanted to give her a baby girl who would then be given in the care of Zakaria salam, another prophet of Allah and Allah took uh, this responsibility that he was going to look after Maryam salam because he was going to put her through a very very serious test and that was to give her a baby without any human intervention that she was not married that no human being had touched her and yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, granted her a baby. This was a miracle of Allah. This is what Muslims believe in as well, that the birth of Isa alayhi salam was a miracle of Allah. And when people said, well, how can uh, a woman have uh, a baby without uh, having a husband? Uh, Allah reminds us that, well, he created Adam alayhi salam uh, without a mother and a father. So why is it difficult for Allah to create uh, a baby uh, without uh, a father, Allah can just say kun and it is done, kun faya kun. Allah says be and it is done and it is complete. So this was one of Allah's miracles that he wanted to show to humanity that it is Allah's power and it is in Allah's power to do whatever he wants and Isa salam was born through a miracle of Allah and it is uh, this that we uh, are called upon to believe in. The surah, of course, also talks about the distortions that have crept in in the earlier in the earlier religious communities, who unfortunately distorted their books. Uh, they went with their uh, religious um, scholars and relied on their opinions without turning to the actual books. So today, unfortunately, we have a situation whereby. Uh, the original books of other communities simply do not exist. They have their own various translations and interpretations and unfortunately people have given in their own opinions within them. They have distorted certain things, they have added various things. Uh, the only book that is that exists in its original pure form as it was revealed is the Noble Quran. And that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has vouched for it. We find this in Surah Al-Hijr when Allah says, Inna nahnu wa inna lahu that 
it is we, that is Allah who sent this uh, zikr to you, this Quran to you, and it is we, that is Allah, who vouches for its protection, that I will protect it, Allah says. And so that's why the Quran has never been changed uh, one iota. There is not one ayat that has been removed. There is not one ayat that has been added. Of course, Muslims interpret the Quran as they go through various phases of life that, you know, new uh, knowledge emerges. And of course, we, we can look at the uh, the message of the Quran in light of the new information that is available, but the original Quran in the Arabic language still exists. A point just to bear in mind to, and to conclude on this is that a few years ago there was a manuscript that was discovered in the library in the city of, um, or the University of Birmingham in England. Now that's a city that's in the in the middle of England. And when they did a carbon analysis of the pages of uh, that uh, Mus'haf, that copy of the Quran, they discovered that it dates back to about 1350 years ago. That means the copies that were produced at the time of the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or immediately after him still exist in their original form at the library, at the, in the library at the University of Birmingham. There is no other book that exists in that form of any other religious groups. Although we as Muslims are called upon to believe that Allah sent them the various books, whether it's the Torah or the Injil or the Mus'haf of Ibrahim which of course doesn't exist anymore, or the Psalms of Dawud but the Quran exists in its original form. And we can trace it back all the way up to about 1400 years ago, when of course that is when it was being revealed. So we can be really proud of the fact that alhamdulillah uh, we have this noble book uh, in our possession and it's important that as muslims we turn to the quran especially in this month of ramadan because the month of ramadan and the noble quran are intimately linked it was in the month of ramadan that the quran was first revealed and of course after that we know that it was revealed over a period of 23 years but we need to engage the noble quran not simply by reading it but also understanding it, and only then we can begin to implement it in our lives. We pray to Allah to give us the hidayah to be able to understand it and to be able to follow it. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.